everyone. Welcome to Plants and Politics. I have some updates to share about Russia's attack in Ukraine. Um, first of all, peace talks have kind of been stalled and they're kind of being overshadowed by war crimes committed by Russian troops. Um, early today, the Dow Jones increased by 300 points and oil prices dropped again because Ukraine laid out a peace proposal and Russia had vowed to further retreat from Ukraine's capital. But then it was revealed that, you know, oh, there's some more war crimes going on. So the U.S. and other countries are now calling for the International Criminal Court to investigate Russia's war crimes. Um, also, President Joe Biden reiterated his belief that Putin is a war criminal because it was revealed that Russian troops executed a large number of civilians in the city of Bukha. After retaking the area, Ukrainian forces went in and they found civilian residents, some of whom who had had their hands tied behind their backs and had been shot in the back of the head. And they said that one of these victims was only 14 years old. In total, Ukraine says that they buried a minimum of 280 civilians in that one area. And the Washington Post said that they were able to verify a video that was shared on social media, which showed nine deceased Ukrainians that were lying in the street of a residential neighborhood. And they said that one of the nine was a child. I don't know if that was the same child. I don't know if it was part of the same people, but that's what we're hearing. Now, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said that he considers these actions to be genocide. And now the U.S. is requesting that Russia be removed from the United Nations Human Rights Council, which let's keep it real. To allow them on the council in the first place was a huge joke, right? Putin literally kills or attempts to kill anyone who publicly opposes him. So really, yeah, they're all about human rights. Um, in addition, the Ukrainian government alleges that as Russian troops were retreating from various areas, they left behind landmines. So Ukrainian forces haven't been able to completely go in and secure these areas because they might get blown up. And um, they're also claiming that Russian soldiers began shooting at peaceful anti-war protesters in the southern city of Energodar. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, this allegedly occurred last weekend. And th these were families who were out there protesting. They also had children with them. And then Russia admitted to bombing and destroying a fuel refinery and a fuel storage facility. Um, this was in the port city of Odessa, which is very key to all of this. And Ukraine confirmed that a government office building in the city of Mykolaiv had been struck by Russian missiles as well. And now Russia is alleging that Ukrainian helicopters crossed their border and bombed one of their storage facilities. I mean, can you blame them? So Ukrainian authorities are investigating now the possible poisoning as well of Russian troops. Apparently, numerous Russian troops had become ill. Two of them actually died. And they're saying what they all had in common was that they were eating food and they were drinking alcohol that had been, that had been given to them by Ukrainian citizens. So Ukraine says that the food and the alcohol was laced with poison. The Ukrainian government also alleges that seven Russian generals have now been killed in the war. And global consequences for Russia's aggression just continues to grow. Australia announced that they're going to be sending armored cars to Ukraine. Belgium, the Netherlands, and Ireland announced that they've expelled Russian diplomats. And Poland is now saying that by the end of this year, they plan to end the use of Russian oil. Um, as for the U.S., the Biden administration is now calling for increased sanctions because of these war crimes. And we've now moved uh, like hundreds of additional troops from Norway over to Lithuania to increase security in that border country. Now, Russia is also alleging that, oh, there's these videos out there showing that Ukrainian troops are abusing, they're torturing and murdering 
are Russian troops. Well, you guys may recall, I, I told you about this last week, that Anonymous got a hold of a directive from the Kremlin saying that they were planning to put out this misinformation. They were going to create videos trying to make Ukrainians look as bad as possible, make their troops look like they were harming Russian troops. So I believe this is exactly what Anonymous warned about and what that document was that they got a hold of. So there you go. You know, we knew ahead of time, but still I'm seeing even people in not just mainstream media, but also independent media who, I don't know if they knew about this. I don't see anybody talking about that document that Anonymous got a hold of. So if I hear any more, I'll let you know, but hopefully more news outlets, especially independent outlets, start picking this up and sharing because some of them are saying, oh, well, I'm, I'm just going to believe it until it's disproven. Well, no, Anonymous put out that, that document on Twitter a week ago or over a week ago. So we knew that this is what they were going to do. Anyway, guys, as I hear more, I'll let you know. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Take care. I'll talk with you soon.